Well, good afternoon. Our next reader is Jason Lee Miller, uh, professor of communication at Berea College. Uh, he is a poet and a storyteller. His poetry, fiction, essays, and book reviews have appeared in numerous journals. These Three Remain is Jason's debut collection of poetry. So please, a little round of applause. I should probably clarify, uh, I'm not a professor. I, am, uh, I work in the marketing communication department. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. We'll edit that out. All right. <laughs> I don't want to be caught. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so these three remain is, is my debut uh, book of poetry. And um, it's about 16 years worth of uh, poetic journaling. And then after 16 years, it was suddenly finished. And uh, so I based it off, uh, there's, a, there's a chapter in Corinthians. So it talks about these three remain, which is, um, which is uh, what matters at the end of the day, which is faith, hope, and love. And I've divided it into three chapters that focus on those things. The first one I like to read is called uh, Before This. Before this, we floated, our amniotic kingdoms, soul heirs sucking down the world, pulling earth and water inward, the primordial clays of being as tiny bits of time through blood. Before this, we were schizo, the split minds of the cosmic egg, the hanging huevos, the illusion of separation, our grandest charade. Because without seeing, we both felt the way mother tossed her faithless husband from a foot log. We were jostled, full of feelings, the fall, the creek splash, the sting of shame and fear. We felt, too, how he laid himself down before the dozer, because to him even a country road was a foil for paradise. Before this, we ate what they ate, and what they ate carried a little of their blood, but also the nutrients of soil, the waste of worms, that before this was a tick, that had sucked down an entire deer before time wore it smooth enough that it was ripe for pushing up maters. We drank what they drank, waters pushed up from beneath, that before this scrubbed the salt and metal from time-smoothed rock, and after this traveled down the mountain carrying little bits of everything out to sea. Before this we traveled that stream of everything, and we became vapor in the wind. Somewhere over Venezuela, maybe, we fell into joyousness, knowing the <coughs> comfort of eternal repetition. Before this, we traveled the globe this way, leaving little bits of ourselves all over and seeding it. I was conceived in New Orleans, and also Turkey and Taiwan. Before this, our illusion of separation was more perfect. We swirled around as elements spewed from the star. Before this, before we had ears to hear of time or distance, we were hurled, for lack of a better term, out into possibility. Before this, we were a word. Before this, a thought from a oneness existing even before an equation developed that might allow it to exist. And before this, well, it might be more useful to talk about after, back across whatever number it is we can't even write. Back to now and after this, where we do it again, break apart into worm waste and spread, spread, spread ourselves around that way until yet again we are gathered up, all the tiny separate pieces of us, <coughs> some perfect place and time downstream. This next one is from the section on hope. It's called Remember Super Bowl 34. 
Well, that sucked. <laughs> but it was exciting. Eddie George, inches from the ultimate goal. From the big show that never opened. Remember him, suspended, stretched, reaching into nothing, into almost something. Remember how time and motion stopped and swelled, pushing out against your hope wrapped around it, until the burst became inevitable. Remember how that moment was silent, cruel, teasing. Remember how you couldn't have known that in your future memory it would seem like there was, in some impossible background, the panicked and pulsing protest of crows or gulls or some other kind of morning bird scavenging the terrain for a carcass to pick clean. It wailed, ah, 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 all through a moment that would never reappear. Eddie was traded. McNair is dead. Only a game like your life, only a player like you, except the stakes are higher because there's <coughs> kids involved and pride to stroke. You can't sprint uphill with a thousand tires strapped to your shoulders the way Eddie could. You can't juke and toss like McNair, chasing wings with foam, sharing a moment of unity with the world with ballers and brewers, brawlers and ballers. A lighter world on your shoulders you thought really, really mattered if dropped. Did anyone in that joint or on that field really anticipate how that world in that moment would swell into a now that presses down so hard all a man can do is push against a defensive line so immovable that time cracks into a million pieces that an inch stretches into miles, into light years that the only new sound in your head these days is the conflagration of entropy picking you clean you in silence wail ah 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 all through every tongue-tipped moment. Remember that. Remember it so your swelling hope world stretches out only into inches that are manageable. <clears throat> so, um, a few from my chapter on love. Now, in the verse, or in the chapter in the New Testament, it talks about um, more like agape love, which is brotherly love. Um, I focus more on romantic um, for different reasons. This first one is called See This Love, Love. See this love, love. See this. See this heart as it melts in the torrid onsen of your mouth? This down-down floating on the hallelujah hymns of prostrated pinwheels? See how I park the air between us, and you pop me hard like a blister. See how raw, how open, how heart-swallowed, how tethered, how hinged on your happiness is my soul? See this sweet devastation, love? This absence filling the outside world when I am inside its terrifyingly close awayness. This puppy dog pomp and circumstance in the purple <laughs> hours of poppycock. You can, I know you see how high and mutual the stakes, how heavy the bags, how costly the worth having is. Our souls, made it in the grinder of being, minced together love. Rejoined and rejoining slow, just as we had asked, had demanded. We sent up our prayers of unity. We said to God, you coming? And God said to us, 
See this love, love? See this? This loss of self so painful? This is going to hurt what you have asked of the hour of this night. It is going to hurt what you have asked us. See how lofty, how reaching, how lusty, how precious, how wise, how much refined for asking is your soul. See this iron on iron sharpening, love? One is what you wanted, you said, and one you will be granted. Over time and circumstance and impassable distances of wounded wingnuts, one-winged flying, you thought merging would be easy. You thought beauty was a Christmas ball. You thought perfection was perfectly painless. <clears throat> but you see this, love? You see? This next one is called Beat for Beat. Don't let your heart match time with mine. I promise the wayward drummer will skip, will skip, and skip on cue to shield the rip, another tearing open of yours or mine. And that, and that, that, and that the only promise I can extend. An oath, a swear, an oath, in constant percussion for both. My heart beats for someone other only. Your goodness and your grace, your grace, already make it jump, jump and shudder, shudder, to shape your syncopated stutter, but you match it beat for beat on pace. But do not be overconfident, for as sure as summer leaves, we leave like turncoats. When summer sun fades without a vote, my drummer will stop his pounding, make evident he has breath no more. So you see, take then your time to mourn, to mourn, move on, move on, find that homegrown rhythm, drum, drum on, you're too good for the likes of me. Another band, another venue, another heart, another drummer, my skin is too thick to make a sound. So the last one I like to read, since my subject is in the room. <laughs> is uh, called uh, Carried When Dreaming As uh, Avalon Fades. <clears throat> Last night you dreamed of a fox. Threw your little knee into my gut and demanded I kill it. Kill the fox, Daddy. Kill it. I rolled over, told you it was only a dream. In the morning, though, the fox yet lived. You told me as I looked for my shoes. You killed it, right? Yeah, I killed it. How did you kill it, Dad? I grabbed it by the tail and slung it. This made you happy. I was happy you were happy. Then did you cut it in half with a sword? Yeah, I did. And then I hit it with my car. <laughs> Smashed it flat, flat, flat. Sure did, baby. That old fox can't get you now. And even as I said it, I knew that demon would haunt me longer than would you. Like just a few months ago. Ages when you're four. When you said something sassy, I've already forgotten. And I replied in like sass that my job as dad is to keep you alive. And you scoffed told me only old people die. I let that thought hover. Allow you to keep it. Because my job is to keep you alive. 
in dream worlds and real worlds. But what am I to do when the loveies between worlds break? I guess that's all I got. <laughs> Look, it's twelve fifteen, right at. Are you supposed to take questions or if you want, yes. Okay. Questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, why didn't you tell us this was gonna be so good? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> but thank you for saying that. The the drummer. Uh -huh. Um, all your poems are, are um, really great, really fascinating. Um, the sound and the rhythm, and it carries you along, and the images and the emotion, of course. But my mind sort of went back and forth when you're talking about the, the drumming. And I would have, if I had it in front of me, I would have quickly read it over again to see if what you were saying is that you're not good enough. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's a young man feeling guilty about breaking up with a girl. And, uh, and it's, a, it's the type of situation, narrative, is uh, that there's nothing wrong with that person. Um, and, but the poet um, can't bring himself to love her. So he has to break up. And he feels guilty. So. Was what about me true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nonfiction. Why didn't you tell me it was so sweet? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I have a I have a question. In terms of your writing with poetry, um, when it comes to the personal, when it comes to the family, uh -huh. do you ever have any nervousness or anxiety about putting it on the paper and then putting it out there? How do you overcome that? How do you deal with that? Or if you're not nervous about it? Well, reading it out loud is harder than putting it on paper. Mm -hmm. um, putting it on paper is always an outlet, you know. It's, uh, it's cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that uh, uh, it helps you uh, to organize what you're thinking and feeling. So. That's why you put a form. That's why I put a form on it. And whether it's a rhythm, whether it's a rhyme, whether it's something like that. Uh, so it, it sort of takes it out of the ethereal area where it's not real defined. And so then I could put it there, and I could put a form on it, and I could read it over and over again to myself, um, and then sort of come to grips with what the emotion is. And, yeah, reading it out loud is a lot more difficult. There's one in here I can't read out loud because I'll just burn oh. down, blubbering. You know, mm -hmm. but, uh, and then my book launch, I did mm -hmm. pretty much burn down, blubbering, trying to read it. But, uh, like, when did you first start to write? The classic question. <laughs> <laughs> I was about my daughter's age um, when I wrote my first short story, which was called. Um, Indiana Jason and the Temple of Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a comedy. Good one, Dad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it was third grade humor. You know? And uh, uh, there's a lot of David Goliath stuff going on in it, you know, stuff like uh -huh. that. But, uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, I always had a good time writing. I didn't think much about it. Um, did a lot of poetry in high school. In college, it was more of a private exercise. But, uh, Did you study writing? Did you take writing classes? Well, um, I did eventually. Mm -hmm. I had uh, a couple of things in college, but I was focused more on what uh, they call the practical, or the you know what you can uh, make money at doing. Uh -huh. And uh, then later on, I. Uh, I uh, got accepted to Spalding University's MFA in writing program, and I uh, studied fiction there instead of poetry. When, when, when did you find your passion for writing? When did I find it? Last question. Yeah. Okay. It's a good one too. 
Um, probably in college, really. Uh, it's something I really enjoyed doing. Is it was how I kind of relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. even though it was work, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But all right, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.